the self development part it is for the preparation to teach the foundation course so this is the purpose of this one and basically we are going to go over the entire uh, uhv2 content along with or mostly focused on the uh, questions that come up frequently so for each topic we are going to take the topic talk about the key points briefly then we will uh, one of us will ask questions or few of us will ask the questions and then we will note down the response the response to each faq will have uh, we'll try to draw out the essence of that response and the response is going to be uh, pertinent to a response that is pertinent at the level of uhv2 the new uhv2 so that it is for the first time participant the response is relevant for the first time participant may have examples and points for further self exploration and there may also be additional points for deeper understanding and as uh, when we share with the first time participant we would be sharing only the uh, essence and the response the additional points we may or may not share depending on you know the state at which the uh, other is so these additional points for deeper understanding are for ourselves so every day we'll have about 10 questions the first one and a half hours we'll spend in this any additional comments or observations or questions that are there we'll have those from 7 to 7:30 in the last 30 minutes or so so that is the basic idea now i'd like to request ganesh ji to take it up kini ka koi prashn hai immediate to wo puch sakte nahi to ganesh ji agar taiyar hain to hum ganesh ji le sakte hain i can we can start i think <clears throat> yes so <clears throat> uh what we would do as rajul ji mentioned uh, <clears throat> is that we'll take up you know questions from each chapter but before we start with the question i have to uh kind of uh, present the essence of that chapter so that uh, all of us are acquainted with uh, the basic uh, content in relation to which these questions are being asked so <clears throat> if we look at this uh, uh, chapter 4 uh, <clears throat> we are talking about uh, the basic aspiration the human aspiration and how this can be fulfilled what is the basis for the fulfillment of this basic human aspiration so <clears throat> if you look at the uh, uh, basic human aspiration this is uh, this we have identified as happiness prosperity and its continuity So these are the three basic things that we have to keep in mind that as a human being all of us want to ensure happiness we want to be in a state of happiness whether it is a young child or an old man every one of us aspire for being in a state of happiness similarly if we ask ourselves <clears throat> we can see that we want prosperity so 
So these two things are basic human aspiration, the happiness and the prosperity. And this we can ask ourselves. Each one of us can ask ourselves whether we want to be in a state of happiness or not in a state of happiness. Similarly, we want to be in a state of prosperity or a state of deprivation. <clears throat> the answers are going to be very simple. <clears throat> Each one of us want to be in a state of happiness, in a state of prosperity, and not in a state of unhappiness or in a state of deprivation. So this is one thing which we can verify, each one of us, that as a human being, we want to be happy and we want to be prosperous. And <clears throat> when you ask this question about this basic aspiration in terms of time, whether we want happiness sometime, once in a while, or we want it in continuity. The answer is that we want happiness. We want happiness, prosperity and its continuity. So in a sense, we can see that human being aspires for happiness prosperity and its continuity. Continuity of both happiness and prosperity. So this is first important thing that we have discussed in chapter four. And of course, <clears throat> we have said that when we are trying to find this out, for example, our aspiration, we can do it by the process of self-exploration. That is all through, we will see in this course that there is a way to go about verifying things. There is a way to go about exploring things. So whatever is said here is said as a proposal, which you do not have to assume you know, it to be true, but you can explore within and find out for yourself, right? So this process of self-exploration is also very important and this we'll try to keep you know, looking into as we go ahead. So every time we have a proposal, we would like to verify it and verify it through the process of self-exploration. <clears throat> and one of the simplest thing that we can do in order to verify it, is to ask our natural acceptance. Ask ourselves, ask our deep within, right? <clears throat> and when we ask this question to our deep within, our what we call as inner voice or conscience, we will call it as natural acceptance. So if we ask ourselves, what is naturally acceptable? to me, we get the answer. We get the answer. For example, if I ask myself, <clears throat> what is it which is naturally acceptable to me? A state of happiness or unhappiness? State of prosperity or deprivation? The answers are very simple. my natural acceptance is for a state of happiness and not unhappiness. 
my natural acceptance is for prosperity and not for deprivation. So this is one of the simple way of exploring <clears throat> within on one's own, own right. So as we have been saying, <clears throat> whatever is said here is said as a proposal, which you do not have to accept as being true, but you have to take it as a proposal to be verified. And the important part of this self-verification is asking one's natural acceptance, whether it is naturally acceptable or not naturally acceptable. So through this process of self-exploration, of which this verifying through natural acceptance is a part, we will try to explore within and get answers to all these questions which are relevant to us. So through this process of self-exploration, we'll investigate into all these questions. So <clears throat> when we do it for ourselves, we find that as a human being, we aspire for happiness, prosperity, and its continuity. So this is one important point. The second important point is this, that if this is the basic human aspiration, then how do I go about fulfilling it? We will look into this self-exploration in more detail later, but <clears throat> now let me go ahead with this content of chapter four. We'll come back to this self-exploration later. <clears throat> so if, when we do this exploration, then we find that we as human beings want this happiness, prosperity, and its continuity. And when we try to fulfill this, we need to ensure three things. Number one, we have to, we need to ensure right understanding in the self. Number two, we have to ensure fulfillment in relationship with human being. And number three, we need physical facility with the rest of nature. And through with this physical facility, I can fulfill my physical needs. <clears throat> so now we can see whether all three of these are required or <clears throat> we can do away with any one of them. So this is one thing that we can explore. And when we can see that all three of them are required, and this we have done you know, a lot of exploration in this chapter four, but you can do it now again. So when we verify, we find that all three of them are required. Right understanding in the self is required, fulfillment in relationship with human being is required, and physical facility with the rest of nature is required. All three of them are required and we cannot do away with any one of them. So this is one important conclusion that we have drawn. Second important question was that if all three of them are required, what is the priority? And on exploration, we find that this is the priority, right? Understanding in the self is the first priority. Fulfillment in relationship with human being is the second priority. And physical facility with the rest of nature is the third priority. So all three of them are required, but in terms of priority, this is the priority. And when we are saying priority, what it means is that if I can ensure the first one, then it facilitates the second, third, and so on. Similarly, if I ensure the first and second, it facilitates the third one, and so on. So in that sense, for human being, this is the priority. Right understanding is the first priority. Relationship with human being, second priority. And physical facility with rest of nature is third priority. And of course, all of them are required, all three of them. Not that you can do away with any one of them. So all three of them are required, but this seems to be the priority. So this you can verify yourself 
but on our exploration we have found that this is what it is but we'll keep it open for you <clears throat> then the third important thing that we mentioned is that today what we are doing is <clears throat> are we taking care of all these three or we are largely focusing on physical facility so if we find this out if you look at the whole civilization today right it is largely focusing on physical facility only it is largely focusing on physical facility only so this right understanding in the self and the relationship with human being which is the first and the second priority is undermined and it is presumed that if we have enough physical facility then everything else will be taken care of everything else will be taken care of but does it happen does it happen so if we explore we find that though we tend to believe that if there is enough physical facility everything else will be taken care of but it does not happen if we are working for physical facility alone then due to the lack of right understanding in the self and fulfillment in relationship with the human being we are unhappy within and we are making others unhappy similarly when we don't have the right understanding in the self we are not able to identify our physical needs and we happen to believe that the need for physical facility is unlimited and therefore in regard of how much we have accumulated we continue to feel deprived so we have a feeling of deprivation in oneself and because we are feeling deprived we keep exploiting others so we keep dep depriving others so if you are working for physical facility alone this is where we end up and if you look at the society today right despite so much of physical facility all around we continue to feel deprived as an individual as a family as a society on the other hand <clears throat> if we are ensuring all three of them that is right understanding in this self relationship with human being and physical facility with rest of nature in the right priority then with right understanding and fulfillment in the relationship we can ensure happiness in one self and when we are in a state of happiness we are able to ensure happiness for the others so we can ensure mutual happiness similarly when we have right understanding in this self we are able to identify our physical needs and we are able to produce more than what is required ultimately leading to a state of <coughs> prosperity within and when we are having this feeling of prosperity within we think in terms of nurturing others so we work for prosperity of others so this is the essence you know, that as a human being our basic need our ba human basic aspiration is to ensure continuity of happiness and prosperity and second in order to ensure the fulfillment of this basic need we need to ensure these three things right understanding in the self fulfillment in relationship with human being and physical facility with rest of nature <coughs> in this priority so this is the essence of what we have discussed in chapter 4